Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a pleasant morning. Again, I am Abdul Hakim Aquino Abdullah, a third year of Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. In this video, we'll be discussing understanding conflict and violence, specifically violent extremism. We see the rise of violent extremism striking societies across the world. We see citizens turning weapons against their own. But why do people engage in such actions? No one is born in a violent extremist. Violent extremists are made. They are people. Before anything else, let's emphasize what violent extremism is. The terminology surrounding violent extremism is complex and still largely debated. This is due to a variety of reasons. Chief among them, the fact that many terms used in this field do not have universally accepted definitions. As underlined in UN Secretary General's Plan of Action to Prevent Violent Extremism, definition of terrorism and violent extremisms are not straightforward. Um, defining these terms is the prerogative of member states. Even if such definitions must be consistent with country obligations under international law and in particular human right law. In this context, the United Nations General Assembly decided to take a practical approach to the matter, which consists is not uh, seeking to provide a definition of these terms. Instead, it adopted by consensus the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy, which provides a common strategic and operational approach to counterterrorism. Similarly, the UNSG's plan of action to prevent violent extremism uh, intends to pursue a practical approach to preventing violent extremism without seeking to address questions of definition. Another reason why this discussion on terminology are complex in international context is because of the challenges linked to translation. Undeniably, when translated, these terms can take an undue or annoyance meanings that increase the potential for cross-cultural misunderstandings. Despite the above terminological challenges, the following reviews key terms that is commonly used in the field. Extremism. Extremism means the belief in and support for ideas that are very far from what most people consider correct or reasonable. Um, extremism thus refers to attitudes or behaviors that are deemed outside um, the norm. This basic dictionary understanding highlights the inherently subjective nature of the term, which can take two different meanings depending on who defines the norm and decides what is acceptable or not accordingly. So let's move to violent extremism. Accordingly, there is no internationally agreed upon definition of violent extremism. The most common understanding of the term is that it refers to the beliefs and actions of people who support or use violence to achieve ideological, religious, or political goals. This includes terrorism and other forms of politically motivated and sectarian violence. So typically, violent extremism also identifies as enemy or enemies who are the object of hatred and violence. It is also surface that violent extremism is when you do not allow for a different point of view. When you hold your own views as being quite inclusive. When you don't allow for the possibility of difference and when you want to impose this view on others using violence if necessary. So why individual joints? There is no single pathway for radicalization or speed at which it happens. It is a combination of socioeconomic, psychological, and institutional factors that lead to violent extremism. There are three factors involved. Push factor, pull factors, and contextual factors. Push factors drive 
individual to violent extremism such as marginalization, inequality, discrimination, persecution, or the perception thereof, limited access to quality and relevant education, the denial of rights and civil liberties, and other environmental, historical, and socioeconomic grievances. On the other hand, pull factors nurture the appeal of violent extremism for example the existence of well-organized violent extremist groups with uh, uh, compelling discourses and effective programs that are providing services revenue and um, employment in exchange for membership groups can also uh, lure new members by providing outlets for grievances and pr promise of um, adventure and freedom the third one is the contextual factors that provide a favorable terrain to the emergence of violent extremist groups such as fragile states that lack the rule of law, corruption, and criminality. Let's talk about terrorism. Terrorism refers to a particular strategy adopted to achieve a political goal, which is singularly uh, the deliberate creation and exploitation of fear um, in a landmark UN General Assembly resolution, countries strongly condemned um, terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, committed by whomever, wherever, and for whatever purposes, as it con constitutes one of the most serious threats for international peace and security. Observably, the term violent extremism and ter terrorism are often mistakenly used interchangeably. While terrorism is a form of violent extremism, and terrorism is also often motivated ideologically, the conceptual uh, un underpinning of terrorism that distinguishes it from violent extremism is that um, the creation of fear or terror as a mean to an end. The UN Security Council, in its resolution 1566 in 2004, uses three cumulative criteria to characterize terrorism. These are intent, purpose, and specific conduct, consisting the following. First, criminal acts, including against civilians, committed with the intent of causing death or serious bodily injury or the taking of hostages. Second, Regardless of whether motivated by considerations of political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, religious, or other similar nature, with the purpose of provoking a state of terror in the general public or in a group of individuals or particular individuals, uh, intimidating a population or compelling a government or an international organization to carry out or to abstain from carrying out any act. And the last one, which constitute uh, offenses, offenses within the scope of and as defined in the international conventions and protocols relating to terrorism. Now let's move to the term radicalization. As with the term extremism, the term radicalization is highly debated when used in the context of violent extremism. The concern is that the use of the term may serve to justify limitations to the freedom of speech. Indeed, radical can be defined in varying ways depending on the circumstance. In certain contexts, it can simply mean wanting to cause political change. In the context of efforts to prevent violent extremism, radicalization is commonly used to describe the process by which a person adapts extreme views or practices to uh, the point of uh, legitimizing the use of violence. The key notion here is uh, the process of embracing violence. If one wishes to point to the process by which one becomes a violent extremist, the expression radicalization leading to violence um, will be more appropriate than violent, um, violent extremism, which focuses on the ideologically motivated resort to violence. 
there are drivers of radicalization to violent extremism. Many models have been developed by different players to classify the different factors influencing the radicalization of um, youth into violent extremism. Some of the commonly cited factors include the following. First is the ideological drivers. There are multiple forms of violent extremist ideology. Some are sector, secular, while other claims that religious legitimacy. The Salafi Jihad ideologies of Al Al Qaeda, Darish, and Al Sabab utilize a selective reading of some Islamic religious texts and histor histories to justify terrorist violence in the name of protecting and advancing. The second one is socioeconomic drivers. Um, adverse socioeconomic conditions create high levels of frustration and a sense of powerlessness. Uh, powerlessness ideal conditions for uh, persuading groups and individuals to embrace violent extremism and to oppose the political, social, and legal status quo. The third one is political drivers. Real or perceived exclusion from political representation, discrimination, misgovernance, and narratives of historical injustices are powerful drivers of radicalization. Violent extremists often invoke such injustices to inspire opposition to national political structures. The fourth one is personal drivers. This includes the search for status, meaning, power, a sense of belonging, and identity, or an all-encompassing theory to explain personal crisis. Individuals personally um, uh, susceptible to radicalization include those experiencing low, uh, low self-esteem, a sense of uh, victimization or alienation from normal social networks, uh, boredom and, an, and frustration, and a sense of powerlessness. The fifth one is global or ge geopolitical drivers. In Kenya, for example, Global and geopolitical drivers are the local effects of international struggles between violent extremists and their opponents uh, worldwide. Um, anger over Western country policies and interventions in the Middle East and other act acts associated with the perceived Western agenda, including Kenya and AMISOM. Uh, Amisom's intervention against Al Shabaab in, in Somalia drive reactions towards Kenya by sympathizing uh, sympath uh, sympathizers with violent extremists. In addition, proponents of extremist ideologies abroad finance and facilitate the ex uh, exportation of ideological ex uh, extremism in the guise of religion. This one is technological drivers. Technological drivers include the wide uh, avail availability of social media, blogs and chat rooms for disseminating extremist propaganda, the increasing affordability of smartphones and um, data means that there is now borderless connectivity that allows extremist ideologies to be produced. This allowed the self uh, radicalization and and uh, clandestine uh, recruitment and training online. Technologies um, of uh, encryption of digital communication further facilitate dissemination and uh, evasion by radicalizers.